today I'm going to build a backyard forge. The materials that I'm going to be using is going to be a 50 gallon barrel, some old pipe, an old brake drum, brake disc. I'm going to try to keep this build under $20. But so far, all I've spent on it is $5. Well, here are my pieces. <laughs> That's an old brake drum disc. That's just a little old piece of pipe. And then it's another piece of pipe. It's pretty junky looking. The barrel was given to me. If you look around, you can find farmers or somebody. Somebody's got the metal barrels, and usually you can get them for free. And if, if you can't, you can find them at the scrapyard for five, ten dollars. Well, that's what I'm going to be making this forge out of. And like with everything else, I'll be making it up as I go. I really don't have a plan. I, ain't, I hadn't drew anything out. And I've got it in my head of what I want to make but I'm sure I'll probably end up changing something else, changing this and that. And, but that's what we're gonna make it out of. We've got that little small piece of pipe, this longer piece of pipe, the barrel, and the old brake drum. And the reason I'm using such a smaller brake drum that's not so deep is because I'm planning on burning coal with it. Uh, if I was gonna burn charcoal, I'd want a bigger, deeper brake drum. Got my hole cut out. It's not pretty, but it don't have to be pretty. This will set right down in it. And that's where where the coal will go. I'll I'll probably put something right here to to help keep stuff from falling in, or I might just make something that you can move. You can just pull out of there let the ashes and clinkers go down. But of course I clean it all up too. Anyways, that's our start. I'll come into the side here, make a, a hole or a door, might make two doors on it. That way, might just make a hole and the door on the front side and that way you can open it up, clean it out and hook your air up right there. We'll see what we come up with. Yeah, I got this piece of pipe cleaned up some. But as you can see, whenever I was looking, looking for those pieces, I found one that would just fit right in there. I can come back and I can, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld this, weld it to it. It'll make me a notch here in the side. Make a notch right here in the side of it. And, Take this other piece of pipe, and we'll try to come in at it at a little bit of an angle. And there it is put together. This here, that's so that the ash can fall out. This one, I went ahead and added that one, so in case any ash fell and came this way, it wouldn't go into the fan or your bellows, whatever. That way they would fall out of that. And the reason, the reason I have this slanted at an angle going like that, is because if I came straight in with it, the air would hit and just go that way or that way. Same way with this. That way the air can pass right back and whenever it hits right here it'll make it easier to just right through there now we'll get this set down in this barrel I've already got it cut out and the side cut out not pretty but it don't have to be pretty to function okay 
So now that I've got that done, and even though I could go ahead and put my fan to it and use it the way it is, I ain't done with it yet. I'm going to add a little bit more to it. I'm going to put a door in the front of it, that way you can uh, get in there and clean the ash out of it easier. And I'm thinking I might put a hood on it too. Maybe raise the, the sides of it up on the, on the top part where the coal goes. Maybe raise it up just a little bit. Don't have to have that, but just to, I may do that just to try to help keep the coal from falling off the side of it. We'll see what we come up with. And there's my supervisors. They lay in there watching me, making sure I, I don't get lazy and I stay busy. Make sure, I, make sure they're getting all their money's worth out of me. There it is. Five dollars. I decided to go ahead and take that other barrel, which it was it was free too, but if I can't find it, my sister can, and my sister found these barrels for free. Uh, she uh, knew a farmer, and, and the farmer said, take them, get them out of my way. So she took them and gave them to me. This is what I did with, with two of them. And like I was saying, I was thinking about making right here, just putting a little edge around it to help hold the coal from keeping it from falling out because all your fire is going to be right here. Anyways, it's not going to be out here. <coughs> but that worked out perfect using that other barrel for the hood and also for the sides like that. Now I've cut a hole, cut a hole at the top to let the gases, all the heat and gases escape at the top. And uh, I mean, as I've still only got five dollars of this and I'm building it for less than twenty. Um, we'll see what I can find and add, maybe add a little bit more to that. I still got to cut the door out down here. I could make the hinges, but it's going to cost me more to make the hinges than it is to go buy them. So we'll see what else we can come up with to go along with it. I forgot to show. Because all I did to put that together is I drilled some holes and I took some sheet metal screws and just screwed that on there. And it's pretty, pretty sturdy. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I did this setup this way. You could, you could do this with steel pipe, threaded steel pipe, but you'll have to have a cap on the end down here. You don't necessarily have to have this part but you will have to have it capped off and every once in a while you'll have to open that up and let you dump your ashes out. And also if you use threaded steel pipe, the reason you'd have to have that capped off is so that it would the air when it goes in it would pressurize and go out. Go out the, the outlet up here. And uh, one of the reasons, one of the other reasons why I decided to make it like this one is that I modeled this, tried to model this one from my papa's old, old forge that he had built, the parts and pieces that I use in mine. But what I have found out by using it and studying on it, 
is that whenever the air comes in, it'll hit and go out, and your ashes will still fall out the bottom, and then whatever ash makes it in here will fall out right here before it makes it clogs your your hose up your bellows and another thing is this little section right here in this little section both of them together it almost acts as a draft whenever the air is going in it it starts pulling air through these two right here Seem, and it seems to give it just a little bit more airflow coming out. That's why I decided to go that route. <coughs> okay, so what I'm uh, about to show you, I, I do not recommend trying this at home without some kind of some kind of experience on this. But uh, I got it. I was saying if I couldn't find it, my sister could, and I needed a fan motor to go with the forge that, that, that I'm building. Well, she found me an old dryer, so I went and got it, cut it up, took it apart, and made a made a blower out of it to use for my use for the bellow for the forge for the backyard forge. Now, I don't recommend doing this it, unless you know what you're doing if you decide if a person if a person ever did decide to go get an old dryer or any kind of old motor anything that blower and it has to be rewired I'd recommend finding somebody who knows how to wire one up for you that's I mean, electricity ain't no joke it, it scares the crap right out of me but I did it once before so kind of had an idea how to wire this one up and I've got a little method to, to doing it I'll use a little six amp battery charger something I know that's not gonna not gonna knock me stiff and I'll find the wires and it won't spin the motor over but it'll make it hum whenever you get the right ones but like I say, I recommend not doing that unless you know what you're doing. So on that, if a person's going to try, do not try, do not attempt what I just what I attempted on this. Okay, I've got a mess here. I've been out here this morning working on the, this fan. It came out of an old dryer. I'll explain more about this here in a minute, but I'm fixing to take it for a test spin. Oh, it worked. Got old hat. I did it not like I did my other one. I made the, I, I used part of the old dryer to make the housing. I just left it there and just wrapped it over. And then I drilled some holes and screwed it together down there and cut it off. There's the on and off. This is the air intake. See? There's the outlet. That's what we're going to hook up to this backyard forge. So next thing I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to get this fan hooked up to this forge. But after I get it hooked up, get it, get it about where it, about where it needs to be. I think I might fire this forge up, test it out, make something with it, see how it's going to work. Now I've got the fan hooked up. I used duct tape. I, the dryer vent hose, I, I cut it down, like down the center so that I could close it together a little bit more. 
And of course, use the old duct tape. Duct taped her up there. How we gonna, gonna turn it on? I've got a piece of plastic in here. I wanna see, just see if it's got enough air to blow that piece out. So let's reach down here, turn it on, see what happens. Well, there you go. See if you can hear it. Putting out quite a bit of air, it might be too much air. Might have to, we'll have to try it out and see how it works. If it's putting out too much, it might have to put a flapper in there somewhere to tone the air down. Now I was going to go ahead and put something in right here, but I'm going to see how it works like that before I do that. So now, let's see, total, total money spent on this backyard forge for $5 for those parts. Nothing on the barrels. Nothing for the fan. And it was like $8 for that hose. I didn't have one. Went and bought it. So that's five and eight. Five dollars, eight dollars. The screws that I used to put that old oh, wait switch, put a switch in there. That was a dollar fifty. So there you go. We still less than twenty dollars in. Okay, so I decided not to put a hinge, a hinged door on it. I made an access panel that kept me from wanting to go buy hinges. I cut that out of the the piece that I cut that out of. And I drilled me a hole right here, put a little screw in it to hold it. I can take it off, and uh, then I can get inside there and clean it out. There it is, open. Now I can take a little shovel or whatnot and all the ashes that collect up down there and just scoop them out. Access panel is I made a cut, two cuts right there and then I just slightly bent, bent that down and bit these sides up. And that's how it goes on. And there we have it. That is a functioning forge ready to use. Might not be very pretty, but like I said, you don't have to be very pretty to function. Now I might come back later and add a little paint to it. Maybe put a little stack on the top of it, but for now it's it's done. It's it's that's a backyard forge that is ready to ready to try it out make sure it does work make sure it's going to work the airflow coming out of it is really good it, it might be a little bit more air flow coming out of it than mine so tomorrow we'll get out here and i'll try it out throw a little coal in it see what we can't make in that forge make sure it's going to work properly and then we'll call it done and like I said, we built one for less than twenty dollars. It's it's fourteen dollars and fifty cents is what I've got in it, but we'll call it fifteen dollars.